My name is Nigel Crowther. I'm WDG Presales, and I'm going to take you through a presentation on bot scheduling. So, what is bot scheduling, and why do we need it? So, if you remember, WDG has two types of um, execution of bots. There's the attended bot, and there's the unattended bot. So, attended bots are where you're manually launching a bot uh, by pressing a button and then viewing the execution of the bot as you watch. Um, unattended bots are where they are scheduled to run at a predetermined time and generally you're not watching them, you're, uh, they're running in the background as a batch and they're doing work behind the scenes maybe late at night and then in the morning you're coming in to see the execution results of those bots to see what they've done. So it's this session we're talking about uh, scheduled bots or unattended bots. So what we see here in this presentation is the high-level architecture of WDG. And you can see in the tenant, we have the repository, which contains your scripts, your bot scripts, among other things, and the scheduler and the workload manager, which is the key component of um, this presentation. And then the dashboards, which uh, allow you to view the execution of your scheduled bots and drill down and see statistics and so on. And then on the client side, you have your browser, which is obviously needed to connect to the uh, cloud environment. The agent, which is essentially the client side runner of the bots. So when you schedule a bot to run in the cloud, it's actually communicating to the agent and the agent is the component which will actually run your bot on your client. Then, of course, we have the studio, which is a component to build your bots in the first place and to publish to the cloud, uh, making sure you, you select the um, schedulable option, which I'll take you through in a minute. And this section here, which is grayed out, is the attended bot section. So we're not going to talk about the client side vault or the launcher because they're both used for attended bots only. Okay, so now we see the WGG Automation Studio, and I've got a very, very simple bot with just two lines. The first line is a log message, which just uh, logs the message greetings to the WGG log. And I've also enabled logging on the Windows event log as well, so it's both logging in the WGG tenant and also on the local client in the Windows log. And then I've just got a simple message box here which says hello so that we can see the when, see when the bot has been scheduled. So I'm now going to publish to the tenant. So give it a very simple name. And then importantly, I'm going to allow scheduling and set as production and publish. So off it goes. And then if I just bring over my... Um, tenant here, so refresh the screen, and hopefully we should see the bot I've just published. And now I'm going to go into the schedule and enable scheduling, so I want it to be uh, run every day. And I want it to be run multiple times a day. And start time, which is uh, a minute from now. Stop time, 40 minutes from now, and interval one second, so one minute. And then uh, I'm going to just give it another name, and I'm going to use my computer, and save. So now... Hopefully, if we wait a few minutes, or rather wait a few seconds, we should see that message box pop up. There we go. There it is. And that means the bot has run. So we can now go to the, um, the uh, jobs and then search for all the bots that have run today. You can see this is what we've just run just now, so I can then go into this 
and you can see I have the, uh, the log message which I uh, output in my script and also if I bring up the Windows log you can see it's also logged within the Windows log as well. Okay, so in the next part of this presentation I'm going to talk to you about scheduling bots on multiple computers and management of the runtime licenses. So you can see here in this slide I've got a, a conceptualized view of the WDG runtime and how it manages uh, multiple bots over multiple runtimes. So you can see here we have, at the top we have three scheduled bots and they are all going to be scheduled at the same time. And we have two available runtimes, uh, a Windows PC with run, one runtime license and a Windows VM with two runtime licenses. So we have three available runtime licenses in total and we have three scheduled bots. So in this particular case we can send two of those bots to the Windows VM to be run in parallel and the third one can be sent to the Windows PC. So now we can have three bots all doing different things running on, this, on, th on two separate computers. In the next scenario, we can see that in this case, I've reduced the number of runtime licenses on the Windows VM to one. So now we have just two available runtime licenses, but we still have three scheduled bots to be run at the same time. So you can see in this case, we can take the first two scheduled bots and run one on the Windows PC, one on the Windows VM. But the third bot will have to wait until one of these bots has finished. And once one has become available, then it, it takes over the runtime and runs to completion. In the final part of this presentation, I'm going to talk about scheduling using queues. So up until now, we've been scheduling using a, a predefined time of day and then either scheduling the bot to run once a day or multiple times a day. Um, that's fine for most processes, but sometimes your, your bots may have a sporadic workload where there's a lot of work sometimes a day and, and no work during others, uh, in which case it may be better to put the work on a queue and then the bot can read the queue and if there's no more work in the queue, it, it doesn't get triggered. Um, is this is a good alternative to polling where you're just polling, say, every minute for an inbox. In most cases, the inbox may be empty, so you're wasting precious uh, processing time and, and runtime licenses for that. So using a queue may be a more efficient way of, um, of running bots. So to, to, in order to run a bot via a queue, you need to create a process definition. Our process definition has several components. It has a SLA configuration, which essentially is just a, um, parameters on how long you, the bot should wait, uh, how long it should run, and the overall time of both waiting and running. It, it should also contain a series of steps. Now, steps are essentially a sequence of bots. And in the simplest case, it's just one bot. We could potentially have several bot scripts running one after the other. So one bot script will trigger another bot script, which will trigger another, and so on. Uh, and the other, the other important aspect of a process definition is the run times. Now you can schedule the um, the bots to run on one or more computers, and each computer has a what's called a, a queue runtime parameter, and that allows you to set the number of the percentage of run times allocated to running a queue. So in the example here on computer one, you can see I've allocated 50%. So if the, if the computer had two run times, you would only ever use one to process queues. And similarly on, on computer two, I've got a queue run time of 100. So you would use all allocated run times. And finally, we have a the queue itself, which is defined in WDG and then the queue will just have work items in it. So that could be, for example, emails to process or customers to onboard. So all these components are needed before you can uh, trigger a bot via a queue. So once you've done that, then the following happens. So you've, in this particular example here, we have th 
three items in the queue. Uh, we have the scheduler, and we have the two computers, as I've mentioned in the previous slide, and the bot script. So we've just got one bot script in this case. And what will happen is the scheduler or workload manager will allocate uh, on first come to first observed basis these three items in the queue. It will allocate uh, queue item number one to computer one, and it will allocate uh, queue item two and three to computer two. The reason is that computer one only has 50%, as I mentioned, so it's only, even though it's got two runtime licenses, it's only ever going to run one uh, bot through the, through the um, queue mechanism. And then for computer two, it has two runtime licenses, so it will use both its runtime licenses to run bots via the queue. And once you once your bot is uh, once your bots are running via the queue, you can use the control panel here to see uh, the status of, of your um, processing. So you can see here I have two bots that are pending, six that are done and three that have failed. And currently it's not looking good here. We've um, haven't passed any of the SFAs. Okay, that's all I've got to show you. I'm just going to summarise what we've been talking about now. So you use scheduling to schedule unattended bots, so bots that you don't want to watch running, that are typically run in batch mode one or more times a day. If you're finding that bots are uh, running in multiple times a day on a regular interval, uh, polling, say, a email, you might consider using queues instead. Um, bots can be run on multiple computers and each computer has a one or more runtime licenses which are consumed for each bot that's running. So if a bot um, is consuming all the licenses on a computer then further bots cannot be scheduled on that computer and they'll have to wait until the, the uh, bot is finished running before it can start. Um, the system vault is the preferred mechanism for storing credentials. Two reasons for that is the client vault expires every 24 hours, so you need to re-enter passwords to the client vault. And secondly, that the system vault is just one vault shared by many computers, whereas the client vault has to be set up on each client. So it's not so suitable for um, scheduled bots. Uh, and finally, we talked about queues. Now, Yuka will be talking about more about queuing and workflows in a later presentation, but I touched on what you can do with uh, scheduling bots via a queue and using the, the, uh, the uh, process mechanism within WTG to do that. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a good morning, evening or afternoon.